Hey what is up guys it is me Flavio here back with another Mafia City video. In this video I'll try to help new players understand this game better. It's gonna cover most of the basics about the game however I don't want to make this video very long so I'll try to keep my explanation short and I'll leave links to my other videos in the description that explain the topics covered in this video in detail. I'll also create a playlist of those videos in case you want to watch all of those videos together. So let's begin. First off, this game is pay to win, which means that if you're a free to play player, you don't stand a chance to win against the big spenders. You might still be able to beat the moderate spenders if they have bad troop formations or if they haven't invested their money properly, but there's no way you can beat the big spenders. By big spenders, I mean players that have spent over $10,000 on this game, and by moderate spenders, I mean players that have spent over $1,000. Now there are two different strategies that you could use to grow in this game. You could either grow slowly, maxing out all or most of your buildings, or you could rush to Mansion 30 as soon as possible to try to unlock tier 10 troops before most players. Now I've used both of these strategies. I've used the rushing strategy in City 89 and I've used the maxing out strategy in City 300. The maxing out strategy is pretty self-explanatory, all you have to do is max out your buildings before you upgrade your mansion. However, I personally feel that rushing to mansion 30 is way better than maxing everything out because of how good the tier 9 and tier 10 troops are. Higher tier troops are basically lower tier troops with better stats, and since rushing helps you get higher tier troops quickly, it means that you can get better stats a lot faster. Moreover, higher tier troops increase your base stats, which are the stats that your buffs are applied to. This means that someone with lower tiers would have to work a lot harder on their stats to match yours. Not only that, you'll also be able to unlock more powerful investments once your mansion reaches Elite 1 or higher. You'll also be able to grind Elite Blueprints daily after reaching Mansion 30, and you'll also be able to get more Hitman Coins daily, which will allow you to improve your stats a lot quicker. You'll be able to advance further in the slammer which will give you a lot more jewelry boxes which help a lot with stats and you'll also be able to do better in events so you'll get better rewards from them. Now if you're new to this game you probably didn't understand most of what I said but the point that I was trying to make is that it is a lot better to rush to mansion 30 in this game than it is to grow slowly. It is extremely important to know which strategy you're going to use to grow right from the beginning so that you can work on your equipment and investments accordingly. If you're maxing everything out, then it is better to go for attack, investments, and equipment. But if you're rushing to Mansion 30, you should work on investments and equipment that increase your construction speed. I have a separate guide on how to get Mansion 30 without spending. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It details exactly what you need to do to get there in around 4-5 to five months without spending. You can watch that video after you finish watching this one. Now, let's start with the basics about the game. There are four types of resources in the game that you need to upgrade your buildings and investments. Cash and cargo are the resources that you need to upgrade all your buildings and investments. Then you have arms which is a resource that you need for upgrading buildings and investments once your mansion reaches level 10. And then you have metal which is a resource that you unlock at mansion 15 which is also used to upgrade buildings and investments. Then you also have gold which you can use to buy all of these four resources or you can use it to speed up your buildings and investments. However, I wouldn't recommend using gold to buy resources or to speed up buildings and investments as it can be used for a lot of other better things. To get these resources, you can either gather from the map or you can build resource production buildings. Unfortunately, there are no gold production buildings in the game, you can only get gold from gathering. There are two more special resources that you can unlock later in the game. You have Hitman coins that you can unlock once your mansion reaches level 23. These coins cannot be gathered, they can only be obtained from Hitman hotels that you build on your turf. These coins are used to upgrade different Hitman services in your contract agency, which is another building that you unlock at mansion 23 that can give you way more stats than your invest center. Then you also unlock elite blueprints at mansion level 30. These cannot be obtained from gathering or from resource production buildings, however you can get up to 10 for free from the daily contracts once you reach mansion 30. These blueprints are required to upgrade your buildings above level 30. So that's all about resources. Now let's talk about troops. There are 8 troop types in the game. You have 4 main types, bulkers, bikers, shooters, and vehicles, and each of these types are divided into 2 subtypes. There are a lot of things that I can talk about when it comes to troops, but I think the most important thing for beginners to learn is how important it is to include defensive bulkers or tankers in your march. Bulkers are classified into two types. 
you have combatters, which are offensive vulgars, and then you have tankers, which are defensive vulgars. A lot of new players classify the tankers as useless troops because they hardly get any kills in battle, and not only that, they are also usually the troops that take the most damage. However, this is just like comparing a shield with a sword and asking how many kills the shield got and how much damage it took, and then concluding that the shield is useless because it hardly got any kills and took way more damage than the sword. Tankers are just like shields. They aren't supposed to get kills, but they're supposed to protect the troops positioned behind them while the troops hiding behind them get all the kills. This is exactly why they have a very high defense in HP, but a very low attack. Once all your tankers are dead, it'll be very easy for your opponent to wipe out your remaining troops, so make sure you add a decent amount of tankers to your march. Bikers are also very powerful troops. Unlike vehicles and shooters that always attack tankers first, the bikers have a special ability called charge, which allows them to directly attack the ranged troops hiding behind the tankers. Most top players only use tankers and riders in their formation with hardly any vehicles and shooters. Within bikers, you have riders and assaulters, and the riders are slightly better than the assaulters. However, in this video, I'm not going to explain why. If you want to learn more about troops, I would highly recommend that you check out my troop formation guide where I dive deeper into this topic. But for now, we're going to move over to buildings. The buildings that you upgrade would depend upon the strategy that you're going to use. If you're using the hyper-aggressive Hitman coin build-up strategy, you would want to only upgrade your Hitman hotels, your mansion, and other required buildings for upgrading your mansion. The idea behind this strategy is to upgrade your Hitman hotels to level 30 so that you can start getting 960 Hitman coins per day, and also be able to start grinding blueprints to push them to Elite 1 and higher. While using the strategy, you'll be completely ignoring your training camps to increase your Hitman coin production. Once your coin production is maxed out, then you'll focus on upgrading your training camps to get higher tiers. This is the best long-term strategy as you'll be able to build a huge Hitman coin advantage over the other players by the time they reach your mansion level. You could translate this coin advantage into a huge stat advantage by speeding up your Hitman investments. Another strategy is to rush to 30 but to prioritize training camps over Hitman hotels, in which case you'll be upgrading the camps to 30 before upgrading the hotels. And finally, there's the maxing out strategy, in which case you'll be upgrading all buildings. The Hitman Hotels are the buildings that you'd want to upgrade first, even while using this strategy. After that, you'd also want to unlock the troop training centers if you can unlock higher tier troops by doing so. The other key buildings that you want to upgrade are the Diner, which allows you to send more troops per march with every upgrade, the Invest Center, which allows you to unlock more powerful investments with each upgrade, the Hospitals, which protect your troops from dying when you get attacked, the Clubs, if upgrading them will increase your training speed, and maybe the contract agency so that you can upgrade more hitman services. However, you should be able to upgrade a good amount of services even when your contract agency is at a very low level. For hospitals and clubs, you'd want to build 8 of each since that's the maximum number that you can build. Now let's talk about investments. You never want to keep your invest center idle even when you're rushing to mansion 30. You should always invest in something while you're upgrading your buildings. If you do not have enough resources to do investments, then you should avoid using speed ups to finish your investments. However, you should never stop investing. There are 13 different categories of investments in the invest center. There are resource investments which mostly increase your gathering speed and resource production. These aren't very important on your main account. Then you have criminal enterprises which helps with upkeep, crew load, hospital capacity, etc. In this category, you'd want to work on medical training to increase your healing speed and also on healing center expansion to increase your hospital capacity. You might also want to max out recovery rate and street operation if you attack a lot of street forces. And if you're rushing to 30, then you might also want to max out construction expert to get that extra construction speed. The crew capabilities investments help increase your stats. These aren't as important as most people think they are. Maxing out all investments in this category will only increase your attack, defense, and health by 15%, and your march size by 30,000. It is easy to max out the tier 1 and tier 2 investments of this category as they don't cost a lot of resources, and maxing them out should give you 8% attack, defense, and health, and 16,000 march size. However, the tier 3 investments cost a ton of resources, so I wouldn't suggest maxing them out unless you have the extra resources to do so. Instead, you should focus on the elite investments and hitman services, which are a lot less expensive. Then you have advanced arms investments, which mainly increase your training speed. Equipment investments, which mostly increase the buffs that your equipment gives you. Vigilante investments, which increase the vigilante stats for cross-server events and also increases the number of vigilantes you can send per march. 
turf defense investments which increase the defense weapon damage and also your stats while defending your turf and then there are mercenary investments which allow you to attack higher level mercenaries and also increase your stats while doing so then you have the storehouse investments which makes it easier to raid storehouses during the storehouse event and finally you have the four elite investments which you unlock once you upgrade your invest center to elite one these investments are way better than the crew capability investments as they give much better stats than them and also cost a lot less resources. If you want a more detailed guide about investments, I would recommend checking out my investment guide that I have on my website, FlavioGaming.com. I'll leave a link to that as well in the description below. Just like the Invest Center allows you to invest in various properties and increase your stats, the Contract Agency allows you to hire Hitman services to do the same. The only difference between the Invest Center and the Contract Agency is that the services in the Contract Agency also cost you Hitman coins, which is a resource that you unlock in Mansion 23. One of the most important services that you should invest in before investing in all the other services is the Hitman Coin Discount Service, as it reduces your Hitman Coin cost by 20 per Hitman Service upgrade. There are currently a total of 1,187 upgrades available, excluding the ones on this page. If you max out this service before doing those, you'll save over 23,000 Hitman coins, which is a lot, especially for lower mansions as they do not produce a lot of Hitman coins daily. The resource cost for most of these services is quite low, but the only problem is getting the Hitman coins to finish these services. However, if you're rushing your mansion and Hitman hotels, you should be able to increase your Hitman coin production pretty easily, and you might even be able to speed up these services if your production exceeds your requirements. But if you're a low-level mansion, you might face a lot of problems earning those Hitman coins because of their low production, and you might be forced to do unnecessary low-cost services or even to keep your contract agency idle until you get enough Hitman coins to do upgrades. Once you max out the Hitman coin discount service, you'd want to invest in any of the other services depending upon what you need. Battle and equipment if you want to increase stats, construction and development if you want to increase your construction speed and reduce construction cost, and training if you want to train troops quicker. If you want to learn more about the contract agency, you should check out my contract agency guide where I show you exactly what each service gives you. I'll leave a link to that as well in the description. Now let's talk about equipment. Getting good equipment is one of the best ways of improving your stats in the game. You can only equip a piece of equipment if your leader level is the same or higher than the level of the equipment. If you're rushing to Mansion 30, I'd recommend getting the level 20 quality shirt and the level 30 casual boots as they both give you double building speed buffs. Then you can also get the level 35 AK-47 gun and the level 35 fancy jean for some extra construction speed. If you're trying to improve battle stats, I'd suggest going for equipment which gives you at least 3 battle stats, especially bulker and biker stats. For example, the level 35 submachine gun is a good piece of equipment to use because it gives double biker attack and single bulker attack. Also, keep in mind that you do not get stats from normal clothes and pants, so you should craft and use a terrorizer suit and trousers instead so that you can get stats from them. Crafting set equipment like the terrorizer suit and trousers will also require blueprints and special gems along with normal gems. You can get normal gems from the lapidary complex or by opening gem boxes, however the best way to get them is from the lucky poker. Be sure to check out my guide on lucky poker if you want to learn how to get a ton of gems from there. You get the blueprints and special gems from attacking mercenaries on the map. Level 1 to level 4 mercenaries give the same amount of blueprint fragments and special gems, so there's no need to worry about investing in higher level mercenaries. However, different types of mercenaries give different types of gems. The chance of getting special gems from mercenaries is extremely low, so it's completely normal for you to not find any special gems after attacking 20 mercenaries straight. Also, while level 1 equipment only requires gems, level 5 and higher equipment also requires you to put in lower level equipment or the same level equipment along with gems. If you want equipment of a specific quality, let's say purple, then you not only need to add purple gems, but you also need to add purple equipment as well to get a 100% chance to get purple. A lot of beginners only use purple gems and not purple equipment because of which they mostly end up with lower quality equipment. There's also Godfather equipment which you unlock at Mansion 15 and Roadsters which you unlock at Mansion 14 that can give you a lot of stats. The Godfather equipment can be sold to get back all Godfather coins invested in them if you want to change your Godfather equipment, so you shouldn't hesitate to keep switching your Godfather equipment as you don't lose any Godfather coins doing so. In the same way, you can also sell your Roadster parts to get back all the Roadster points invested in them and buy new ones. 
However, this cannot be done if you purchase a limited edition roadster. If you're a spender, I'd suggest going for the Massacre set or any of the higher level sets since they give way more stats than the normal sets. The Massacre set usually costs $3,000 if you make it the normal way. However, I have a video showing you how you can get it for only $100. In the same way, I have a video showing you how you can get the level 40 Warlord set for just $700 instead of getting it for $6,600 the normal way. If you're looking for more info about equipment or ways to increase your stats, you should check out my guide on how to increase your battle stats where I've shown a lot of different ways to improve your battle stats. And finally, we'll be talking about babes. There are 5 free babes in the game that you can unlock by upgrading your mansion to specific levels. Upgrading your mansion to 19 should unlock all of these 5. There's also a 6th free babe that you can unlock by playing the Diana's Treasure Hunt which is an event that lasts for a week and remains closed for 2 weeks after it ends. You want to upgrade your babes favor as much as possible and also start them up to unlock their skills. You should also do the Slammer Daily which is another building that you unlock once you reach Mansion 23. Doing so will give you jewelry cards which you can use to upgrade certain babes after unlocking them. Apart from the free ones, there are also 12 more babes currently in the game. Angela can be bought for $300 and all the other babes can be purchased for $500 each. If you want to learn how to upgrade your babes quickly then you should check out the video I made about it. I leave a link to that as well in the description below. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. However, there are still a lot of things that I haven't covered like the smuggler, the VIP buff, the events, lucky poker, skills, and a lot more. If you want to learn more about all of these things, I highly recommend that you check out my Mafia City playlist which covers a lot more stuff in detail. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Thanks for watching the video guys and I'll see you in the next one.